client-side browser and mobile device storage, and AJAX request management. So to sum it up, Amplify.js is a set of JavaScript com components that does publication subscription, uh, which is, uh, what we'll find out is th the two methods, Amplify.publish and Amplify.subscribe. Um, it also does local storage, uh, Amplify.store, and it does request uh, data management, Amplify.request. Um, in the spirit of a append a philosophy is that we want to be in the spirit of giving back to the community. We, we take from the community because everything's open source, but we also want to give back. And so we built these components and we open sourced them. Um, the website is amplify.js.com. Uh, you can find it, us on GitHub, and we're dual licensed under MIT and GPL version 2, which is the same as jQuery. So let's start, let's look at what we're doing here. Uh, we have the pub sub module. Uh, just to give you a quick quick look at, you know, uh, some simple syntax. Here we're doing uh, a subscribe method where we're, we're defining all our code that we're, we're going to be using. And then we have the publish method. This publish method is going to say, hey, I want to run this code. I'm going to publish this. Can you subscriber uh, listen to me publishing and run the code that, that it's supposed to be doing. So Amplify's pub sub is often referred to as the core of the library. Uh, if you look at the code, uh, it'll be under the, the core uh, directory. Amplify.publish and Amplify.subscribe facilitate the, the publish and subscribe messaging pattern. Does everybody know what the, at least heard of pub sub? Half the room. Well, uh, basically, uh, publish is you know sending out communication saying um, I want you to do something, and, and subscribe is basically listening for um, you know, is the listener the saying once when somebody is published something is published I'm going to run that code. Um, why would you do this? Uh, separating logic allows for loose coupling of your components. And this results in less brittle, more reusable code. It's just more maintainable to do it this way. Um, so let's just look at the, some of the syntax usage here. Um, we have four different ways you could you could um, you call you define your subscription. Uh, the first one is basically your mandatory way of running it. You need a topic, and you need a function callback. The topic is the name of the message uh, to subscribe to. So basically, it's a you know a unique identifier. Uh, the callback is the function to invoke when the message is published. On that second line there, uh, we're introducing the second object, which is uh, optional, which is the context. And this context is what the, uh, this variable will be in the callback function. So we can pass in um, any variable we want, and this will, will assign itself to what we pass in. Uh, the third line there is, uh, you know, we've We've taken out the context, but we've added in this, this fourth uh, parameter called priority. And we're able to um, set a priority of if you have same, if you have two different subscriptions uh, that both have the same topic, uh, you can set which order they're going to run in. And so that's what priority is. And then that last line just has all of them in the order that they would be in. So here, let's take a look, go back and look at that uh, example I posted before. Um, we have uh, the first couple of things here. We have a subscription that we're, we're assigning. Uh, we have a context data is our topic. Uh, we're passing in the JavaScript object of a, the first P tag on the page. And then we have a callback function uh, where we pass in data. And uh, this, that text, so this refers to that, that JavaScript object. And we're going to assign the text of that, that object we pass in data that new text. And new text is the object, um, is the uh, property of the object of data that we're passing in. So if we look at the publish method here, uh, we, we, we're calling publish. We're going to say, you know, context data, that's the, the topic. And we're going to pass in this hash or this object literal, which is the data that we're going to uh, fill our, our subscription uh, method here. So new tax, and we're 
we're passing it the string, this is new text. Uh, the, the bottom subscribe and publish is uh, an example of how we can pass in multiple parameters. Uh, you don't have to pass in just a, a hash, you can just pass in all the variables that you want. Um, I'm showing two, but you can have as many as you need. So uh, multiple params is the topic, so you can see that's how, you know, the same there. Um, and we're just passing in the two, two parameters there. The function callback is, is expecting two, so we're, we're putting those parameters there uh, at the end. So um, let's take a look at setting priority. So in, in this example here, we have two subscriptions. Uh, the first one doesn't have a priority set, and the second one does have a priority set. So we have prior, priority examples are topic. Um, we have a, some kind of callback function. We don't really need to worry about what, what's in that. But our second subscription has um, the same topic, and our uh, callback function is checking to see if the parameter is actually null or undefined. Um, and if they are, we're just going to return false. We're just going to kill the subscription. We're not going to do any more work on that. So it's a good way to check for errors in, in your parameters that you're passing into it. So that's publication subscription. Uh, it's pretty easy. Um, it's not very big. Um, so let's take a look at local storage and how we handle um, using local storage in browsers and how we abstract that. So again, let's just take a look at a you know, simple example. Um, so abstracted local storage, uh, we're going to call amplify.store. And it's just basically a, a key value pair, right? Uh, the key is the name or the var variable that we're going to call or use. And then the value is whatever we're going to assign into that. So employee name. Ralph Whitbeck. The second example is showing how we can assign uh, a, vi a variable name like employee, and we can pass in a, a hash. We can have a full uh, object literal being passed in here. So, you know, full name, Ralph Whitbeck, start date. Um, that's actually my start date and what my position is. So, Amplify Store is a wrapper for various client side storage systems. Um, it, provides a consistent API that handles storage cross-browser. Um, it utilizes the latest storage technologies. There's a bunch of them, and each, each browser supports different technologies. Um, it'll deg degrade gracefully, so if a browser doesn't have uh, a storage system, it'll just use it in memory. We can passively and explicitly choose the storage type to use. Um, so we can either not worry about it and just let uh, amplify, figure out what storage system to use, or we can explicitly tell it which storage system that we want it to use. And um, we serialize everything to and from JavaScript objects using JSON serialization. Uh, amplify supports the following storage types, local storage, session storage, uh, global storage, user data, and memory. So we can see here, what browsers are being supported for which? Um, show up over there? Nope. So local storage supports IE8 plus, Firefox 3.5 plus, Safari 4 plus, Chrome, Opera 10.5 plus, iPhone 2 plus, and Android 2 plus. Session storage supports all the same browsers as local storage. Global storage supports Fire, Firefox 2 plus. And just a note there, if you try to do global storage on Chrome, for instance, you'll get an error. So if you explicitly try to say, without some kind of uh, uh, try catch or something to, to catch it, um, you're, you're going to throw an error if you try to save some data into global storage if it's not available. And then user data is for IE5 and 7. And then um, the last point there is, is memory. And the, there's uh, another point that didn't fit apparently in this in this. In this screen here, that, but memory is basically your degraded experience. So if you don't have local storage, um, that's what you're going you're gonna to use as memory. Just one quick dependency note. Um, so for browsers that do not support JSON natively, you're going to need to also include uh, Douglas Crockford's JSON2 um, 
just to be able to parse JSON uh, because the browser doesn't support it natively. Uh, unsupported browsers include IE5 and 6, if you're still using those, I'm sorry. Uh, IE7, you're probably still using that. Uh, Firefox 2 and Firefox 3. Uh, Mozilla, I believe Robert is not supporting that anymore. Is that correct? 2 and 3? Yes, thank you. <laughs> so, I mean, it's probably one of those, it's probably a time to, you know, think about not supporting those, those two browsers and start uh, coming up to the, yeah, the newer browsers that are out. So um, let's take a look at the usage. Amplify.store, gonna, you're going to provide it a key. And you're going to provide it any mixed value, so it can be any type of um, value, as long as it can be serialized as JSON. And um, the third optional per, um, hash of options is you know, a, a set of key value pairs that relate to setting um, for storing the value. So if the local storage technology you're using has some specific um, values that you want to set, like it expires time, um, you, can use, you can use the option hash there to, to set that kind of stuff. So let's take a look at a basic example. Um, so here, the, the, the local storage technology is being passively decided for you. So it's going to pick the best um, local storage uh, for you. So amplify.store, employee name, rough look back, we've seen that. Uh, if we want to get that value out, uh, we can just uh, declare a variable, underscore name, and just do request.store, and then the topic, the key that we want. And that will return rough look back as a string. Um, Again, here's amplify.store employee. We're passing in this hash to it. Um, and if we want to get you know, th that ob object back, again, we're going to declare a variable. We're going to call employee, call it employee. We're going to call amplify.store, send it the key. And then we can use uh, employee just as an object, you know, employee.fullname, employee.startdate, employee.position to get at those, those values. So we can treat it just like a regular object. Um, we can store data explicitly. So instead, in, in addition to passively, we can say specifically what uh, storage technology we want to use. So in these examples here, we're, you know, we can we can declare our variable is being assigned to local storage. Amplify that store, that local storage, our key and the value uh, we're going to pass into it. And additionally, we can do session storage, global storage, user data. And if we want to just store something in memory real quick, we can use memory as well. So that's store. Uh, so pub sub store, pretty, pretty simple. Um, now we're going to get into basically like the request management and how you request data. And this is really powerful once we get through it. and you know, I show how, like how you can take take your management of, re, of AJAX requests or any kind of data that you're trying to manage, um, and combine it with other jQuery plugins. Um, I'll get to it in a second. I'm getting ahead of myself. So Amplify's request is it's what is it? It's an abstract layer for any kind of request for data. Um, you can create, maintain your entire server interface. In caching policy in one place um, by by using the define method of the of the request method. The yes, I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, components that need data use, um, we can call amplify that request without concern for the implementation details that we define in the definition. And requests made through amplify that request will always be made asynchronously. So let's take a look at the usage real quick. There's a, there's a few slides, so I'm going to get through this quickly. Um, so the, this definition is used primarily for AJAX request. Um, AJAX, uh, Amplify.js comes with an AJAX request type built in, which requires jQuery. Um, so if you, you need to use the AJAX request type, uh, you're going to need to also include jQuery. That, that is a dependency. Um, so what, when you define your, your resource, 
you want to pass in uh, a resource ID, which is you know, a unique identifier string. Uh, the request type, so uh, in this case, the default type would be uh, Ajax, but you'd, you'd need to send that in. Um, and then any kind of settings, uh, a set of key value pairs that relate to the request type. Uh, another way of doing this is, um, and this definition is useful for defining mock requests, and we'll get to that later. Uh, but you would send in a string resource ID and a, a resource. And the resource is a function to handle requests, uh, which receives a, a hash of settings. So I'm noticing that on this slide it's wrong. Instead of string, it should be a function. That hash, hash of settings uh, should have um, four, four things to it, uh, a resource ID, a data, uh, a success callback, and an error callback. So now that we've defined our, our, our resource, we want to be able to request that resource. Um, and here's the usage. There's a couple different ways we can, we can call that. Um, we can you know, send in our res resource ID, and then we have a couple optional things of uh, the data, a set of key value pairs of data to be sent to the resource, and a callback function to be invoked on that once the request is successful. Uh, here's the other way we can just send in a hash um, of settings, uh, resource ID, data, and success function. All right, so some examples here. So in this example, um, we can use namespacing to organize our definitions. So we have um, two definitions here. Both are related to customers. Uh, one is going to update, is going to get the customers as a list. So we do customers.list, and uh, it's an Ajax type. And we're going to call the endpoint customers, and we're expecting JSON data back. And so we use data type there to define JSON. Uh, in the second one, we're going to update customers. So we're going to update a specific customer. So customers.update is our resource ID. Uh, Ajax is our request type. And we're going to pass it uh, an endpoint of customers. But we're going to set the ID to be a, a variable. And we're just going to basically capture what that ID is using that, that variable syntax there of the, uh, of the brackets. Um, again, we're expecting data, the data type to be JSON, and we're going to post this method back. So our method is, is post. And this is the um, this is the other request way. Uh, oh, this is the definition. This is the execution. So once we have our definition, we can uh, you know call that definition to be executed. So in the first uh, example there, we're going to update our customer. And we're going to send, it, send in our, the ID of what the customer is, 42. And we're going to send in what the first name of the customer is, Alexander. And we're going to have some uh, success callback function that's going to run after we, we get the data back. The second example is just th the same call, only we're showing how to do it as a hash. So uh, we're sending in the whole object in. Uh, we're setting the resource ID, which is customers.update, which is the same as before. Um, but we're sending in the data as a hash as well. So we're going to set its ID, its first name now, Alexander. If we had last name we were going to update or any kind of other kind of information, we can send that in in this hash as well. And then we have um, properties for success fun um, function callback and error function callback. You can define um, caching for the definition. So in this example here, we're, uh, we're doing everything the same. And we're going to list customers, uh, same uh, endpoint, JSON data. But we're adding this, this new property called cache, which is true, set to true. And the cache is data that is in memory for the page load. So this will store this data in, in memory. Um, and it will go away as you know after you navigate away from the page or you reload the, reload the page. Um, and that will exist for the entire page load. We can also set a time limit. So instead of just true, we can set 
um, time as base is milliseconds, so 30,000 is uh, 30 seconds. We can also have persistent caching. Um, and with persistent caching, it requires Amplify that store because we're going to use uh, the local storage to persist uh, this data through. So uh, Amplify comes, uh, if you download it from the site, it, it comes packaged up all as one, all three of these components as one file. Or you can use, uh, there's a folder that separates them all out and you can, uh, if you care about that kind of thing, you can just load in the modules that you need. And uh, so here uh, we're showing uh, the difference is cache is going to be set to persist. And uh, the cache on the bottom here uh, is showing how we can set the uh, type to persist and we can set it and expires time at the same time. So we're going to set cache and send it in a hash. Um, in this thing we're going to do, what, five, five minutes? Five? I have five minutes here, so five times 60. Uh, it's five minutes, and then we're converting it to milliseconds by multiplying it by 1,000. So caching reminders. In memory, cache only persists for the length of the page load. Uh, once you navigate or reload, you, you lose that data. Uh, persi persistent caching requires amplify.store and is used to store the data in local storage. Um, there's more flexibility that, that you can do with uh, with the request method. You can define custom request types. So if you wanted to build something for OAuth or a local database or online offline mode, um, you can define your own uh, request type. You can define custom decoders, and I can never remember what it is, so I put in my notes here, which are really small. Decoders allow you to parse an AJAX response before calling the su success or air callback. This allows you to return data marked with a status and read accordingly. This also allows you to mani manipulate the data any way you want uh, before passing the data along the callback. So basically before the data gets passed into your success callback, you can do some manipulation to it uh, using a decoder. Uh, you can also define custom cache types and uh, custom request definitions. We'll get to that in a second. So that's request. Um, Let's talk about how you can jumpstart your development using um, the mock JSON uh, jQuery plugin. Somebody stole my Pepsi. All right. So mock JSON, it's uh, not not a part of the Amplify JS library, but it can be. It's the two are are, are made for each other. Um, you can get it. Uh, Menno Van Sluten, uh, he developed the plugin. Uh, you can get it at that GitHub address. It basically is a syntax for creating fake data objects uh, based on mock JSON templates. Uh, it's using variable data from a mock JSON template. You know, keeps your data unpredictable um, enough to catch ed edge cases, and so that you, you're not when you're developing, you're not getting stale data all the time that you're always seeing, um, and you can uh, you know get into a rut of just developing for the data that you've you know statically specified. This you know makes it more random and more unpredictable of what's going to happen. Uh, it's a simple a API for generating data. So adding mock JSON to a mock. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define what our data is going to look like. So up here we're going to define an object literal. Uh, we're going to call. We want our first object there to be called shots. We want six to nine of them. So shots, and we're going to use the pipe symbol, and we're going to say, randomly give me six to nine shots. And this is what the shots are going to look like. Um, and so we define a, um, an array, because we're going to have multiple shots here. And each item within the array is going to be another object literal. Um, and it's going to have a title. And the title is going to be random. Um, mock Jason, and I, I think I get, I do, I get to this in the next slide, so I'll just breeze through it. But basically, at lorem is a variable um, that's going to basically randomize um, data for you. Uh, URLs, we're just going to send it in uh, the hash symbol. And then image teaser URL, we're going to set it to a static uh, image for now. And so what we want to do, so now that we have our template, 
uh, we want to set a re request definition. Uh, and so instead of the pointing our de definition back to a, uh, an endpoint, an AJAX endpoint, we're going to define it to point back to this, this template. And so we, we use uh, mock JSON to do that. And we use the, 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 top, the resource ID and the, and the success callback function to, to do that. And so we do, we're passing in the settings hash, so we're going to do settings.success, so we're going to define a new success um, uh, function. And we're going to say, uh, we're going to call the mock JSON plugin. We're going to say generate from, from template. So we're basically, we're going to generate the JSON on success right here using mock JSON. We're going to send in the shot template object literal. And so what this will do is, uh, this request definition will, once you know, once we say amplify that request shots, it's going to find this definition and it's going to generate random data and send it back to um, your code as if you were actually requesting this from like an AJAX endpoint. So more on these variables here. Uh, all variables and strings specified as uh, at variable name that are all uppercase uh, are auto replaced with random data from a persistent data store. And so. These are the available variables that, have, that are available out of the box. Um, so you can do, you know, uh, uppercase letters, lowercase letters, names, emails, dates, times, and then uh, just if you want to use the lorem ipsum, you know, placeholder text, there's a couple of uh, variables for that as well. Uh, in addition, you can create your own custom uh, data, variable data. So in this example here, we're going to uh, define a placeholder variable, and we're going to send that placeholder variable into uh, the image teaser URL so we can get different, different images uh, instead of just one static one. So uh, the placeholder uh, variable is just basically a, an array, and that array just holds the different values. Uh, and when this var variable gets called, it's randomly going to pick one of those values. and um, place it into the image teaser URL when it generates the six to nine shots. All right. So um, what I've got planned now is uh, the mandatory to-do uh, example, because uh, just because of those are easy to make. Um, this, this code isn't op you know, terribly optimized, but it shows how to use Amplify. But it's still good enough to be used uh, as operational code on, on the Mir space station if it was still up. Okay, sorry. All right, so let me, let me just show uh, some code here. All right, so I have, you guys see that? Good. So uh, what I have here is a, a simple to-do list. Um, basically, uh, I'm randomly uh, creating, using the mock, a mock, uh, JSON uh, definition, I'm randomly creating uh, up to four uh, to-dos, which are all using the lorem ipsum um, variable data. Um, and this data is, uh, if, as you see, if, as I'm reloading, it's persistent. It's using amplify.store uh, to, to save all that data. I can, I can show this by doing uh, amplify.store. I can clear out the the task uh, key by sending it setting it to null, and running that, and so now when I when I refresh because I cleared out the store, I should get a, a a new set of tasks here when I refresh, which I do. And so uh, as I, I do tasks, they disappear, and and they they show up. Um, I can add a new task. Uh, it adds it, and as I refresh, uh, it persi persistently stays. So let's take a look at the code real quick. Um, so I have uh, script.js, which is basically, I want to just take a look at the HTML real quick. So I have each, uh, some simple HTML, um, the header, I have a button, I have a div called with the ID of tasks. This is where all the tasks are going to be uh, injected onto the page. And then I have this hidden div here, which is basically allowing me to add a new, new, new task to the to the page. 
Um, some of the calls I have are some of the J JavaScript files I have. I'm loading jQuery. I'm using handlebars as a templating engine for uh, the task. Um, I'm loading in the full Amplify library. I'm loading in the mock JSON library. Uh, and then I'll get to these three files here at the end. That's where the custom code is living. So let's start with uh, script.js. Script.js is um, basically our initializer for, for the page. It's going to kick things off. So amplify.publish, we're going to use the pub sub uh, methods here to basically initialize our tasks. Um, and then we're, we've got some, uh, I'm using some contextual jQuery, which is uh, a way of, of getting at data using just uh, what you know. Uh, the, the benefit of doing, the, Doug Niner, one of my coworkers, has many great talks. I think mo most of them are online about how to use contextual jQuery. But it's, it's a way to use um, selectors in a way that if the, if the, it minimizes code, code changing if your HTML code changes. Um, so it's just a way, if you can figure out a way to get at the selectors that you're looking for by going up and down the tree instead of just going directly at what you want, uh, it, it's better that way. So uh, in those things, we just have some, some simple binds uh, for click events uh, that, we're, that we're declaring. And each of these, instead of just declaring what those, those click events are doing, we're, we're publishing out to you know, some subscriptions that we want, want to call. Uh, so let's just take a look at the subscriptions. So um, let's see. So amplify, subscribe. We're doing uh, our our initializing. So we're doing our, our random. Uh, we're we're making sure the store we have something in the store. If we don't, we're going to call our mock mock uh, requests. So uh, if if amplify dot store task is empty uh, and you know store doesn't have any value. We're just going to make sure that it doesn't have like an empty, uh, an empty, uh, empty set. So we're just going to set it to something new. Uh, we're going to load in the tasks. So we're going to um, uh, load in our mock requests. Uh, so we're firing off another sub subscription later on down on the page, and then um, we're going to get back that data and, and our success callback here. Uh, we're going to we're going to basically create a task and, and inject it into the page. Um, if, if there is data in the store, uh, we're going to go into that else, else statement and we're going to basically uh, just create each of the new tasks from, from the local storage uh, onto the page. Uh, if we have a new task, we're going to, the, the new task subscribe but, uh, is basically when you click on the, the button that says add tasks uh, at the top, we're just going to uh, uh, show Show the form that's at the bottom and, and set the focus. Add task is when we enter in a, you know, a task and hit enter, we're going to uh, insert it into the page. We're, we're using publish there because uh, um, we're basically reusing the same code that we're using up in the initialize task. Create task is um, you know we're, we're taking that task either from store or whatever, but we're, we're passing that into the subscription. We're going to append it to our page. Um, all, I, I'm going to post a, a link to all this code. I know I'm flying through it. All right, and then the last thing, close tasks. So if um, we click on the checkbox, uh, that will fire off some events. And then uh, close new task. So uh, once we enter in a task and we hit add, we want to close the, um, uh, the, the, the new task window there and reset everything. All right. So that's our subscriptions. Uh, so these are easily, you know, these are, are, are drawn out into the things to note here. They're drawn out into a separate file. Um, so we can easily get at, the, at that data. Uh, we're not mucking up um, scripts.js where, you know, basically has the order of execution. Uh, this has no order. We can basically just, you know, write the functionality we want for each subscription. Um, then the other f file we have, uh, amplify request definitions.mock. So this is a simple file. We have at the bottom, we have our template. 
Uh, we have uh, we're, we're, we have tasks. We want three to five of them, um, and we're you know randomly picking a, a task name using at lorem. Um, and then uh, at top, we're, we're requesting you know we're defining our request. We're using mock JSON and we're we're loading that in. So if we we're going to hook this up into like a, an actual database or something. Uh, we would have a, another file called amplify that request def definitions without the mock name, and we could, you know, set our request definition to actually point to an AJAX endpoint, and uh, you know that that would work. That would do the, the saving on, on the back end, um, and so we could develop using our mock uh, JS. And then when we're ready, we could uh, just take out mock in in the HTML here. We could all we had to do was switch re request definitions mock to re request definitions that js and it'd be easy as you know here's our here's our development data here's our actual live data so we're not doing both uh, that's basically you know how easy that that was i know that was flying through uh, let me go back to a keynote play so uh, all this, I posted all this code to my GitHub account, so github.com slash redwolf slash append to to do, or amplify to do. Um, so thank you. My name is Ralph Whitback. My email, Twitter account, my web address. Any questions? Go ahead. Uh, why don't you support uh, web SQL? The question is, uh, why don't you support web SQL? Yeah. Hmm. I, I'm not sure. The... Um, might not be easy enough to do. Oh, you know why? Because we, 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 you can define a custom uh, request type. You can define that yourself. No, no, no. Why? Uh, and if I store that, support web SQL, which is included in the web I'm not sure why they decided not to support that at that time. So it probably, I, I, I want to, I want to say that you could do that in, in, um, Amplify the request and just define a, your own request type um, for local databases. Uh, that would be your, your approach to, to solving that instead of using store. Okay. Any others? Uh, what was your motivation behind creating Amplify JS? I mean, there's a number of uh, MVC frameworks out there that and they they suit well for creating web application and they typically already have the event system, the publish subscribe system, and pretty rich store system. Uh, well, and, yeah, and of course some kind of request framework. Sure. So, who, sure. Should, who should use it? When, when would I want to use Amplify JS, and on what kind of project? That's my question. When and and why is particularly up to you, right? You look, look at the code and see if it it fits your needs. Um, our goal was some, we want to have something. We didn't want to have a full MVC library like you were, you were suggesting. We wanted to have a small small library that just fit the needs of, of our clients and our needs. Um, so it was small enough for us to include in our projects, um, and that's why we built. You weren't happy with what was after that? At the time, I think this was built a couple of years ago. It was built before I joined append to, so um, there, there wasn't as much out there at the time. Uh, when they built it. So that was our motivation, was to build something that worked for us. Uh, if, I have a browser, but if I have a browser that doesn't support so, any kind of storage, do we have any fallbacks in uh, AmplifyJS to write my own? Uh, sure. Um, to the, work with, through AmplifyJS uh, with storage, but storage will be on server side or something else. If you want to store in a server, you probably want to use Amplify that request to, you know, send data back. I mean, uh, I don't want uh, to define it uh, with uh, if I have in browser, then use Amplify JS. Sure. Else, then don't use. I mean, can I extend Amplify JS to write this kind of code? I think you. I think there. Is, let me uh, have it up right here. I think there's a way you can do. Different types of stores. Storage types. Um, no, there isn't a way to, to actually extend it. 
Um, so the only fallback that we have right now is uh, just falling back to memory. So if there's new local storage, we'll ha we'd have to add it or could, you know, submit a pull request and we can evaluate it and, and, and do it that way. So there's no plugging extensions to do that. Any other questions? Sure. Uh, so if I get right, uh, the most optimal uh, store is a local storage, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but the local storage has upper limit of five megabytes. Sure. Uh, and you so can run what happens if an application hits this limit? How Amplify JS handles that? Um, right now, it'll send back an error that you've uh, exceeded your your limit, so you'd have to do some error handling to. So I have to catch there. Yeah, yeah. There's the the error function callback that. So you there can... are no strategies like, for example, push the old data. No, basically it's just abstracting away, um, you know, sort of like jQuery abstract away dealing with the DOM. This is just abstracting away dealing with which local storage you would use and not have to worry about which one that you're, okay, you're using. Thank you. oh, we have time for more or? We should, we should continue with the other talks. So okay. let's, let's thank Ralph. Итак, so right now I'd like to invite Pavel. He's going to be the first Russian speaker today. Pavel works in the company Badu, and he's going to tell us about how they're able to support normal workability of their internet side that is used by more than 150 million people all over the world. Well, my introduction is ended. And everything else Paul will say about himself. Простите.